So, hello everybody. Welcome back to my creative space. This is Emma. Beautiful spring day out there, full of the joys of spring today. It's just been lovely. Had an interesting week or so with my cat not being so well. She's fine now, but it's been like playing catch up with everything. And I'm super excited because there's lots to be doing. Equinoxes and uh, solar eclipses notwithstanding. I'm ready to start growing things in the garden, I think. I want to get some seeds planted. I don't know about you, but I've started, oh, I don't know, many years ago, I started growing seeds by the moon calendar. And if anybody uses that, you know, I'd be interested to hear in the comments below if you use it and how you find it. Um, a friend and I decided we would start doing this, and I can't even remember why now, but it seemed like a logical thing to do. Um, I do a little bit of astrology. I don't follow it assiduously, but I watch a few astrologers and I'm always quite interested in what's happening on the planet, our planet Earth, and what's happening with the other planets and how I'm feeling and what's been going on in my life. It's interesting how these things kind of come together. Um, I don't follow it assiduously. I don't say, oh, this is going to happen because they said such and such. I just kind of go, oh, this is interesting. Maybe that explains why I've been feeling so unsettled or this has been happening. It's really interesting but the moon planting by the moon the seeds by the moon has been a real boon because what it does for me is you plant them by uh, the kind of seeds that they are whether they're a leaf seed that's going to produce sort of salad vegetables or something like that or whether they're a fruit seed that's going to give you beans or courgettes or squashes or something so for me instead of having 400 packets of seeds to try and plant you just have them in this little pack of this box and it says today it's a leaf day so you go and plant six of those or ten of those and it helps with successional sowing so I get I might plant six lettuces one week and then a fortnight later or so when the next leaf day comes around I will plant the next tranche of seeds so it's kind of I, I'm pretty sure it helps I'm pretty sure germination is good and we seem to get good crops but you know, I'm not going to say yay or nay to that. It's entirely, I think that's quite subjective. But I really like doing it for various reasons. I like the feeling that I'm working with nature and this this flow, the moon energy. It feels like a natural thing to do somehow. And pardon me, as I say, on a practical note, it actually means I'm planting fewer seeds, more focused way, and it makes it easier. So anything that makes life easier, I'm all for that. Because you know what? It's all good, isn't it? Um, as I say, my cat wasn't very well, so we've had a lot of washing to do, and I'm very delighted because I've actually just got a new washing machine delivered. And I know this is total luxury, and for some people having a washing machine would just be this incredible luxury item to have. I'm so grateful. I have the very basic things in my life that help me run my life more easily, and I'm so grateful for that. My old washing machine, bless it, it was about 12 years old. It was limping along. Every time I used it, I had to empty the water out from it. And my cat hasn't been very well. I'm not going to go into details. <laughs> but I had a lot of cat towel washing to do, shall we say. And I got so down about it some nights. It was like 9 o'clock at night, trying to sort out the cat towels, blah, blah. But I discovered that once I stopped moaning about it and stopped playing the victim and going, oh, isn't this terrible? And I actually just... Um, opened the drain thing, got the water out every time I used the machine, suddenly life got so much easier. So stopping moaning was my big thing. It was like a big lesson to go, actually, if you just show up and you do what's necessary, it's okay. You can, you can manage anything. You can cope with anything. So anyway, I'm glad my cat's a lot better and I'm going to get planting seeds again. And I'm so excited to be here with you again because this piece is really coming together now and I'm very thrilled to show you what's been going on. So no more chat from me, let's get on, let's have a look and see where we're at. I can't tell you how happy it makes me to be sewing like this again. Proper free machine embroidery, just using the lines and the stitching just to hold all of these different colours in place. I'm not worried about what it looks like. I'm just letting the machine do the stitching and I'm moving the fabric around and just creating these sort of swirly, a swirly sky effect. It's not meant to be realistic. It's just meant to hold the fabric in place and look interesting, I suppose. And I'm just loving it. It's so freeing. And it's like, it's like life, isn't it? Art is like life. There's no right way to do it and there's no wrong way to do it. So 
so it's a slow and steady job because I've got to be really careful. I want all the fabrics to be held in place. I've got to keep my fingers out of the way, obviously. Um, and it's lovely because it's about concentrating. And when I concentrate, everything else goes out of the window. All I'm thinking about is how to get the stitching done, where it's gonna where it's gonna go next. And it's so lovely. I just love it. It's a very beautiful process. This. It's very, very relaxing because this is all I'm looking at and all I'm thinking about. So I hope you'll enjoy it with me. I just love it when it gets to this bit where I've got the fabrics are not pinned, they're all stitched and the whole thing is beginning to come together and it's so much easier to work with. It's a joy. I absolutely love it when it gets like this. I don't know about you, but it just feels like it's really coming together. And the stitching just becomes a complete pleasure to do. So this is where I've got to. I've stitched all of the sky down and it's so different. I have to tell you, I have come a long way since I bond webbed everything. Once upon a time, I would have wanted this all neat, cut out, held in place, and now look at it. It's like, I don't know, it's just all free and soft and it's kind of what I had in my head, how I wanted it to look was this, you know, and sky is just this incredible moving thing, isn't it? It's ever changing, it's never still, and it's just, I'm so excited about this. So you'll have to let me know what you think in the comments. It's very, it looks very rough and ready, but I've had so much fun just doing these lovely swirly stitching. It's just been brilliant to do. So I'm gonna move down and I'm gonna work on the, the lower section next because I feel as though we need to, we need to pimp that up a bit. Having done this bit, the bottom end is really too plain. Okay, so I'm working on this area down now at the moment, I just decided that I wanted to play around with this area because I feel as though when we look at that it's very plain and having done other areas now with different fabrics I feel as though this needs to have something to balance it so I've cut all my little pieces of beige fabric that I've got all these sort of beigey shades and I've just been playing around with them and I don't know what's going to stay and what's going to go I'm just literally playing and seeing, but I'm enjoying the feeling of sort of textures coming in, um, playing around with these, and I'm going to be able to stitch around them. So it's like kind of a patchwork, really. And I've got these lovely different lacy bits, textured bits, bits we can add on, bits we can take off. Just playing around, trying to give this a bit more va va voom, shall we say, and seeing what, what fits, what doesn't. So isn't that nice? I think it's, it's so much better than just that plane underneath, but I'm glad I did that because that's given me the plain areas down here. That's given me, you know, something to work with. Let's put that up a little bit. There we go. That's better, isn't it? Um, yeah, so this is what I'm going to play with next. And then I will be pinning these on and stitching. And I thought up here also I might do some kind of longish bits maybe because this bit is like where all the like the angle that you're looking at it is sort of like flatter somehow and all the all the little the flagstones look much closer together don't they they kind of kind of concertina on top of each other so I'm thinking well I could be doing sort of lines of lines with them fabric in and just chopping and chopping and changing with those adding bits in um, yeah so exciting times and I'm going to get on with that now, playing around. So what is lovely is I've got some of it stitched down now and you can see what I really appreciate is how it's puffing these up so they've got a kind of a three-dimensional quality to them. I'm definitely feeling that they're a bit rugged, they're old, they're battered, they are just really old flagstones and it's all just in the mix really. I'm mixing up the thread colours, I'm mixing up the fabrics and I'm loving how loose it is feeling and I'm just going to carry on some of these going up that way a little bit. Not too many, I don't want it to be fussy and then you know it'll come together slowly and gradually and I'm really enjoying it. It's so much fun to do this. There's nothing riding on it, there's nothing right or wrong about it 
and it's just fun to do. So I've got some more stitching to do and then we need to be thinking about some of the other bits that are going to go on to it, which is going to be so exciting when we get the lighthouse and everything on, it's just going to all suddenly make sense. So more stitching to do, let's go and get these bits put down. Right, so big drum roll. I have cut out something which is sort of lighthouse shaped. I've worked out where all these little bits of reddish orange sort of stuff go. I've got bits for the bottom and I've got a little bit ready to cut out to go around the top bit. But basically what I'm going to do now is just get this stitched down and held in place. I've put a little bit of something very soft underneath. It's a bit of a liner because I think if I just use the white fabric you know, things from underneath could well come through, but it's got to be soft enough for my machine to stitch because this is actually quite, this fabric's quite tough. Look, if you hear me trying to pin it, it's quite a tough fabric because it's a linen. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine, wish me well, and I'm going to get it stitched down. I'm very excited because it's suddenly really beginning to become a lighthouse with a sky and a pier, and it's really, it's exciting. Okay, so I think this lighthouse is done. It's a bit wonky. It's not 100% exactly like it is in the picture, and I don't care. I've tried to just keep the salient features of it, the, these red bits. I managed to get the date on quite reasonably well, and, and the window's more or less in the right place, and the railings are kind of in the right place. And it's done. That's the most important thing, is it's done. And I've it's been a bit tricky to do, but I've enjoyed the challenge of trying to make it look like the lighthouse. It's such an iconic thing, it has to kind of look roughly like it. So, as I say, there's lots more details you could put on, but this is not what it's about. This is about the gist of this image, the, the whole view, not just the lighthouse. So the next thing I'm going to do is a little teeny weeny little lighthouse for over here, which I'm excited about because it's so small, it'll be easy to do, I hope. So I'll do that next, and then I'm going to get on down here to the capstan which is just waiting to be done, like the final piece. And then I'll just be tidying up and finishing off and it'll be done. Ta-da! Just like that. Ooh. Oh. Well, look at this little cute little lighthouse. I don't think I've ever done anything quite so small and dinky, or at least not for a long time when I used to work quite small. I used to probably do things like this, but it's been a little fun challenge to do. I've so enjoyed it, just putting a little smidgen of thread here and a smidgen of thread there and it's just kind of made it come together. So I'm quite pleased with that. It's fun to do. And if I was to be really picky and look at this and look at the photograph, I know things are not in the right place, I know things are not quite the right size, but do you know what, I really don't care. The whole thing is, it's the effect that people are just going to see this and then they'll be able to look out the window at the harbour and see, hopefully, hopefully see what I've done here. They're such iconic landmarks, these things. It's just incredible. And it's a, quite an honour to work on them, actually, because there's such a huge history in Whitehaven, in Whitehaven Harbour. There's a great deal of history there. And it's kind of honouring the people who, you know, put these things in place all those many years ago, centuries ago. So, um, next thing is to get on with the cap stand down here. So I need to find some fabric and work out how I'm going to do it. Bye. 